Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 3rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got a post from Brad today about the latest version of Emotet. Uh, what's sort of different about this version is in how it actually creates the spam emails it's using to trick other users into infecting themselves. In this case, it went into the infected machine's email history and did pull an email out and then crafted a reply with an attachment. Now the email picked and the message added uh, aren't really connected. So that seems to be all pretty much random, but still of course this significantly increases the chances of someone falling for actually opening and running the attachment. The attachment itself is your standard Word document with macros. So you have to enable macros and it will kind of trick you into enabling macros by claiming that Office is not activated. And this is how the user is tricked into enabling active content, uh, which then of course will allow macros to run. Personally, I have run into sort of occasional activation notices from Office, in particular if I wasn't connected to the internet and the like. So users may actually be somewhat used to seeing messages like this, which of course then increases the probability that they will actually enable macros. And talking about some of these generic user awareness items, Sans Security Awareness released its latest ouch newsletter. This is typically directed at a less technical audience than the audience usually listening to this podcast, but maybe something to hand to colleagues or relatives and the like usually covers uh, some sort of basic uh, best practices from a less technical perspective. And yesterday I talked about the PDF encryption vulnerability. Well, uh, often people try to use some non Adobe PDF readers to evade some of these issues. However, uh, these alternative PDF readers run into many of the same problems just because of the complexities of the PDF format. For example, we have uh, two updates for alternative PDF readers, one for XPDF, which is typically used by Unix users, and then also an update for the Fox IT reader, which is probably for Windows user, the sort of most common non Adobe PDF reader. I haven't seen it in a while, but users in Germany apparently are seeing an increase in malicious spam that claims to contain an eFax document. Now, eFax, of course, has often been used uh, to basically trick people into clicking on attachments. These emails are actually in German, so that's probably why they're specifically targeting uh, German users. What makes uh, these particular emails also a little bit more plausible is that the domain names used for the malicious links are plausible eFax links like cloud eFax.site, eFax cloud.site, and a couple other of these uh, .site domain names that do contain eFax. And that probably makes it more likely that users actually click on them. And while it is not Emotet, it's a little bit of different, a more basic type of ransomware being distributed here. The tricks they're using to get users to actually execute the ransomware is pretty much the same thing. They do claim that you need to enable macros in order to actually see the facts that someone sent you and then their code runs. And Microsoft continues to tweak the security features in its Office 365 offerings. Now, one feature that's going to be soon available tenant wide is an idle timeout that you can actually configure for your users. So if they don't use the applications for a while, they'll be automatically locked out. There are some settings like this already available, also for per application basis, but these new 
new settings will hopefully make this a little bit easier and more intuitive to really apply across all of your users and all of your applications. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.